Welcome to Newsem. This is Factor of Power, and I have the honor to host today Mr. James Warlick, the former U.S. co-chair of the OSC Minsk Group. Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for your time and readiness. Thank you for having me on your show. Our previous conversation was just a year ago during the blockade of Nagorno-Karabakh, Artsakh by Azerbaijan, and you stressed then that Taliyev had the responsibility to guarantee the core rights of Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh under some kind of status within Azerbaijan, even, even without thinking towards conducting any ethnic cleansing there. But the worst predictions came true. Azerbaijan conducted ethnic cleansing in Nagorno-Karabakh, forcefully deporting more than 100,000 Armenians from their homeland. What do you think? Why did it end like this? Well, unfortunately, it had to end through military uh, force. But we all hope that that's not the end of the story. Azerbaijan prides itself on being a multicultural society. And President Aliyev, uh, praises Azerbaijan for being uh, open to all people, regardless of ethnicity or religion. Now, here is an opportunity for Azerbaijan to welcome Armenians back into Nagorno-Karabakh. I know it's not going to be easy. Uh, I, I, there continues to be animosity between Armenia and Azerbaijan. But we all hope that there will be a time when Armenians will feel safe and secure uh, in returning to Nagorno-Karabakh. And the challenge is uh, for to Aliyev here. Um, President Aliyev, are you prepared to welcome back and protect the rights of our Armenians? Uh, that should be a part of any peace deal. And as difficult as it uh, is, I do believe it's possible for Armenians and Azerbaijanis to live side by side in peace and security. So I don't think that the issue of Nagorno-Karabakh is closed once and for all, and it may be revived at the moment. Well, uh, in terms of the territoriality uh, issue, uh, Azerbaijan clearly believes that the issue is, is closed and that Nagorno-Karabakh is a part of the territory, uh, an integral part of the territory of Azerbaijan. That doesn't mean that the door is closed for Armenians to return to Nagorno-Karabakh and to be protected under the law. This is something that President Aliyev uh, should welcome, and he will be viewed as a statesman for doing such. Uh, it's clear Armenians have traditional ties to Nagorno-Karabakh, and the mass evacuation of more than 100,000 people is in fact a, a tragedy for Ar Armenia. I'm not talking about the issue of territoriality. I'm talking about people and their wish to return to Nagorno-Karabakh. And that needs to be a part of the discussion, uh, how uh, the uh, Armenian minority uh, it, it can return to Nagorno-Karabakh and live there uh, safely, as so many people would like to do. Under what conditions? Can be there an Armenian presence in Nagorno-Karabakh under Azerbaijani governance without any international mechanism and international presence? It comes down to President Aliyev. Is he willing? And I know there have been years, maybe generations of animosity between Armenia and Azerbaijan. So this is not an easy decision. Uh, and it, 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 it will uh, be difficult for those Armenians who do return to Nagorno-Karabakh. But I do believe it's important for the government of Azerbaijan to recognize that uh, uh, Armenians have had a home in Nagorno-Karabakh uh, for a very, very long time, and many would like to return. 
And it's up to Aliyev to create the conditions to allow that and to ensure that they are they are protected if they do return. Uh, I'm not saying that this can happen tomorrow, but I do believe that it is something that Armenia and Azerbaijan should be discussing and uh, Aliyev should be a statesman and recognize that this is important for the future. Mr. Ambassador, what do you think? Why the great powers, including the United States, uh, which assured during the blockade of Nagorno-Karabakh that wouldn't tolerate any ethnic cleansing there, uh, didn't stop Aliyev and prevent the conduction of ethnic cleansing in Nagorno-Karabakh? How will Aliyev succeed to hold all the cards in his hand? Uh, well, military force by Azerbaijan uh, prevailed. And it's unfortunate. There have been many times when Armenia and Azerbaijan could have reached a peaceful settlement. During my time as co-chair, there were opportunities for uh, a deal to be made where there wouldn't have been this loss of life. There wouldn't have been an evacuation of more than 100,000 people, but those opportunities were lost. And unfortunately, military force was used and we all now see the result of that. James O'Brien, the Assistant Secretary of State for European and Eurasian Affairs, announced recently in Yerevan that the US administration hasn't any clear position on what happened in Nagorno-Karabakh last year. What do you think? What is the reason that the United States, among other international actors, escapes from calling a spade a spade? Well, we should be looking to the, to, to the future uh, rather than behind us now. The United States government should be doing everything to promote a, a, a peace deal, uh, a deal that is uh, fair uh, and uh, uh, for the region will lead to uh, a period of peace and prosperity. And I believe that that's possible. The, 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 the talks are difficult. I'm not uh, a part of, of them, but I know that that behind the scenes, the, the negotiations are difficult, but they seem to be making progress. And I'm hopeful that there can be a peace deal that comes out of this, that relations between Armenia and Azerbaijan can ultimately be uh, regularized. And that peace deal will put an end to military conflict, which has been so devastating for the region. Secretary of State Antony Blinken spoke with the president of Azerbaijan yesterday and stressed the, and called on him to sign the peace treaty with Armenia without delay. This was especially underscored by the uh, State Department in his uh, statement. And Assistant Secretary O'Brien stressed in Yerevan uh, as well that the time had come for Armenia and Azerbaijan to sign the peace treaty because there is a unique chance to create a trade road connecting the Central Asian countries with uh, Europe via the Black Sea and the Mediterranean, uh, as well as uh, there is another road connecting the three regions uh, via Georgia. So what do you think, uh, what is the importance for the United States related with the creation of such kind of trade road? Well, seeing an end to the Armenia and Azerbaijani conflict is extremely important. Uh, this rivalry has uh, been uh, unhelpful on many levels. So a, a, a peace deal opens new opportunities. Um, uh, Assistant Secretary O'Brien is talking about uh, trade and that will be one very important aspect uh, if relations between Armenia and Azerbaijan can be regularized. Uh, many will remember that in Soviet times, there was a rail line that uh, ran uh, through Azerbaijan uh, across Armenia into Nikichevan with a spur going into Turkey. Um, that 
rail line uh, would be important for uh, uh, improving economic conditions for both Armenia and Azerbaijan. So I, I do think that there are opportunities and uh, I hope that the peace deal uh, you know, can be uh, signed uh, soon. That doesn't mean that all of the issues are going to be resolved, like the one I just mentioned about uh, the, uh, access uh, to Nagorno-Karabakh for Armenians. Uh, th those issues are very difficult ones to resolve, but I do believe that the peace deal should be concluded and there should be continuing discussions on some of these issues that uh, require further attention. Mr. Ambassador, the development of trade routes from Central Asia to Europe in the context of Middle Corridor has also importance in wider context related with other regional developments, the conflict with Russia, the complicated issues with China, besides the Armenia-Azerbaijan issues. Right. Well, opening up the region, uh, I think, will bring a level of uh, prosperity that everyone will welcome. Um, that includes the United States, uh, China, uh, European countries. Uh, I do believe that if relations between Armenia and Azerbaijan can be regularized, that opens a path for improved Armenian-Turkish relations, which could be very beneficial for the region and for Armenia in particular. Do you see any prospects for the normalization between Armenia and Turkey right now, taking into account the cooperation uh, between Turkey and Azerbaijan and the preconditions that are put forward by Turkey related with the peace treaty between Armenia, Azerbaijan and other issues that are only related with Armenia Turkey issues? At this point, all roads lead uh, through Baku. There needs to be a peace deal. Relations between Armenia and Azerbaijan need to be uh, reg regularized. And when that happens, I do believe then that there will be an opportunity for uh, improvements in Armenian Turkish relations. There are a lot of issues that need to be addressed between Armenia and Turkey, don't get me wrong. But I think that there will be an opportunity for steps for confidence building measures. Uh, uh, I, I don't envision uh, resurrecting um, the uh, uh, negotiations that took place in the early 2000s, but I do see an opportunity for improved relations if a peace deal can be, can be signed between Armenia and Azerbaijan, yes. Mr. Ambassador, coming back to the issue related with unblocking of regional communications, Azerbaijan, backed by Turkey, demands from Armenia an next territorial corridor called so-called Zangizur Corridor. Russia has its own interests uh, in the unblocking, unblocking of the regional communications and having some presence there. Iran categorically rejects the possible changes of the regional borders also in the context of regional communications. So what do you think? How do you see the final solution of this problem related with the unblocking of regional communications, taking into account the fact that the interests of great powers around this issue seriously collide? Right. Well, uh, the issue of a corridor uh, enabling Azerbaijan to reach Nakhichevan uh, is extremely important for Azerbaijan. And I do believe that if that corridor can be uh, opened, uh, and relations normalized, that it will be to the advantage of Armenia and uh, the region. Uh, I am assuming that there is a, a negotiation that's taking place now on the terms of what that corridor would be, what it would look like, uh, and its status. Uh, my understanding is that Azerbaijan is seeking a rail corridor only. But again, it's hard to know what's going on behind closed doors and what the terms of that discussion are. I think it will be important to have that rail corridor. 
uh, that is an important piece of the puzzle that uh, needs to be concluded. Um, exactly what the terms of that should be, it's not clear yet. Also the demarcation of the border between Armenia and Azerbaijan, uh, it's easy enough to say that though that border should be uh, the old Soviet uh, uh, border, but in, in fact, it does need a closer uh, look. Um, uh, I know that Armenia took a very bold step and uh, uh, relinquished four en uh, enclaves. Um, there needs to be, if, if this the demarcation discussions cannot be resolved on a bilateral basis, there does need to be some kind of mediation. And I would like uh, it, you know, if it looks like the talks on demarcation are breaking down, uh, it, it would be important to uh, include uh, a third party or parties to help with mediation of some of the difficult issues. Mr. Ambassador, you talked about the border demarcation delimitation process and its importance. Uh, despite the start of this process and readiness of Yerevan to sign the peace treaty with Baku within a month, uh, Baku puts forward new, new demands, new preconditions, de demanding also from Armenia to edit its constitution, state symbols, uh, to appeal to OSC, OSC to abolish the Minsk group and so on. So, uh, moreover, our foreign ministry alerts that after the COP29, uh, which will be held uh, in Baku this November, Azerbaijan may again attack the territory of Armenia. So uh, do you see some kind of tendency by Azerbaijan to escalate the situation, the attack on Armenia, and do you see uh, real perspectives for lasting and stable peace between Armenia and Azerbaijan if Aliyev has such kind of non-limited ambitions? Adding new conditions uh, to the peace deal is, is not helpful. Uh, in particular, um, uh, a demand to uh, Armenia to amend the constitution. Um, as you and your viewers know, that is a very difficult step to amend the constitution of our, our Armenia. Uh, I, I do believe that the provisions in the Armenian constitution uh, will eventually need to be uh, changed, but making that a part of the current deal, that before there can be a deal, those provisions need to be changed, is not a helpful step. Uh, I, I hope that behind closed doors, Armenia can give some assurance that that uh, it, 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 that 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 those provisions that Azerbaijan would like addressed um, will at some point be addressed in the Armenian constitution, but those cannot be folded into a peace deal that we hope can be be signed within weeks or or, or months. Um, it's no, I I, I, uh, I understand that. With regard to the the, the Minsk group uh, process, I do believe that the Minsk group has served a purpose over uh, decades uh, in terms of main, helping to maintain uh, peace and security uh, for Nagorno-Karabakh. That was overtaken by military action on Azerbaijan. And for all practical purposes, there is no longer a Minsk group. Uh, do you consider realistic that Armenia, in case of uh, distancing from or cutting its ties with Russia, can and will receive reliable guarantees from the West, from the United States, the European Union, and won't be left alone in front of Azerbaijan in Turkey if there won't be any peace? Uh, it's encouraging that uh, Pashinyan would like to uh, improve relations with uh, European Union countries and 
to uh, bring Armenia closer to uh, Europe and the European Union. That is encouraging, but it's a very difficult balance because, uh, as you know, uh, Armenia continues to be you know, reliant on Russia for uh, energy, security issues, trade, uh, and those that th those uh, dependencies are not going to change quickly. That's one of the reasons why opening up the region through a peace deal, through improved relations, can change things. Uh, that will provide an opportunity uh, for less reliance on Russia and uh, partnership with uh, other countries, not just the European Union, but other countries more broadly. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I, I hope we can see Armenia and Azer Armenia go in that direction. Which can be the realistic margins of expectations for Armenia from the Western countries, from the United States, the European Union? Well, step by step. Uh, this is uh, the, the conversation that we're having and the variety of issues that need to be resolved. These, these are very difficult. And I think the first step is a peace deal and uh, then there needs to be slow progress uh, on a range of other issues um, that include trade. Um, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't come easily. A, a war that has, a conflict that has gone on for uh, decades and the animosity that it's created between Armenia and Azerbaijan will not disappear overnight, but there needs to be progress. There should be confidence building measures and both parties, all the parties should be willing to negotiate uh, these issues peacefully rather than uh, threatening renewed military conflict. Mr. Ambassador, what about the format 3 plus 3 and the triangle of Russia, Turkey and Iran as regional powers? Can the dialogue in the framework of this triangle, of this format, uh, ensure some keys to stability in the Caucasus, in the South Caucasus, also for Armenia, uh, taking into account that only these regional powers have permanent presence there? Uh, it's hard to believe that that format can work uh, uh, today, given the rivalries in, in, in the region. My view is whatever format works and can make progress uh, uh, is welcome. Uh, but uh, by all accounts, that's a, a strange marriage of countries that is unlikely to produce much uh, success. Uh, uh, the countries in the region all have their interests and they're going to protect those interests. I do believe that they have an interest in general in peace, uh, peace and security, but in terms of making progress on some of the difficult issues that we just discussed, it's hard to imagine that the regional powers uh, can uh, play a, a, a helpful role. That said, uh, you know, countries like Turkey, Iran, and Russia, the, the neighbors, uh, have an interest in what the settlement is going to uh, look like. And I do, I, I do believe that, 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 that they, are, they are already, and so they should, you know, be talking to uh, both Yerevan and Baku. Then, uh, what would be the most balanced and what's the most important least risky strategy, for instance, the security strategy for Armenia uh, in conditions of such rivalry between great powers? I think the most important step right now is the peace deal. Um, progress has been made. Uh, both sides have made clear what their interests are in this peace deal. Uh, it seems like a deal is close. Uh, 
um, uh, I would encourage Armenia and Azerbaijan to find a way to sign that deal and to continue discussions on some of the issues that we've just talked about. And Azerbaijan insists on peace on its terms, which have no limits. Well, that's a part of the negotiation. Armenia is going to insist on, 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 on issues as well. Uh, they need to be discussed in good faith, and I do believe that they, they are reconcilable. And it does look like it's uh, close. Uh, I do continue to believe that Armenia and Azerbaijan can not only sign this deal, but can regularize relations uh, between uh, the countries and can begin confidence building steps that would be helpful for both countries and the region. And Mr. Ambassador, what do you think? What is the role uh, of uh, military cooperation between Armenia and France? As you know, there, is, there are uh, new arrangements and the cooperation in this field is deepening. Uh, there is new deal on purchasing French military equipment. What's the importance uh, of the deepening these contacts and cooperation in this field between Armenia and France? Armenia has every right to defend itself and to purchase weapons from uh, France or other countries. But because we are close on a peace deal, uh, this French action uh, is uh, a new irritant uh, in the relationship between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Uh, I think that uh, a deal like that should have come after uh, a peace agreement was uh, signed. Um, that said, it is what it is. Uh, Armenia has a right to defend itself. It will continue to have a, a, a military. It's not going to disband. It's going to protect its uh, uh, borders against uh, uh, any uh, threat from out, outside, and it has every right to, to, to do so. Uh, it's just unfortunate that, that as we get close to a peace deal, that this gets thrown into the mix uh, and further complicates discussions. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, for an interesting conversation. Thank you. Thank you for having me today.